Awesome. Great. Yeah, man. How you doing? I'm good. It's day. I was talking to Mike. I don't know what day it is of the quarantine. You know, <laughs> I, I, I had a dream, not last night, but the night before. And then I realized the meaning later in the day. And here's the dream. I dreamt that it would, the, the, the date, I'm like looking at the date and it was like, whoa, March 46th. Like, that's <laughs> weird. I was like, I was like, I don't, I didn't realize that there's a month with more than 31 days. Oh, it's this and now I realized it's because it's because like, it's just like time has stopped. Like, yeah. You know? I don't know if you've been doing this, but I've been looking at our Google calendar and it's just, it will say like, uh, today was supposed to be uh, a gig. Let's say was my birthday was like Huntsville, Alabama, or I'm looking at today's dates and it's just like jazz fest shows. I wanted to see a days in between. I know. Yeah. That's weird, man. But yeah, I guess for context, it's, it would be the Monday in between jazz fest which I think the days in between has really grown into its own thing that people are really enjoy coming early. And that's kind of like, Oh, almost like uh, people who are in the know, like to check those days out, except for the regular days. Of course, Yeah. I mean, and it's beautiful. I mean, the weather is perfect. Look, I'm, in my, I'm in my yard. Yeah. It's, go it's gorgeous. I've been, I've been hanging out, man. I mean, I don't think I've been outside this much in a, since I was like a kid, to be honest, I've been. Spending yeah, so it's working for us right now, but, Come uh, come July and August and even next month, it's gonna it's yeah. gonna be uncomfortable out here. Yeah, it's just uh, it's the reality of living in this part of the country that time of year. But you know, like we'll be safe hopefully then, and we can yeah. there's pools to go to and and beaches to check out. And yeah, how's Bertha doing? She's doing good, man. She's uh she's at the point now where we're kind of in the home stretch. Uh, the funny thing we might were talking about this early is. This happens to a lot of women when they're pregnant. They get to a certain point and they no longer want to sleep in the same bed as me. There's just a really? couple factor going on where she's just far more comfortable with her pregnancy pillow on the couch. So it's almost uh -huh. like being back on tour in a hotel. I have this king size bed. Oh, wait, so you, wait, you're not going to the couch. She's going to the couch. The way our bed is very high up and it's like incredibly plush and, and squishy and it's just not suiting with her mobility right now. So she, oh. yeah, I offered, trust me, that would have been a complete disaster if I yeah, did. Yeah. But she, yeah, man, she's going good. She's, uh, she's eating a lot more, which is, was good. And she will continue to once she's done breastfeeding. So it's, I wish yeah, it's, it's, soon. it's like, it's like, you know, it's, almost, it's like a month and a half. <laughs> yeah. If all things go according to plan, the 4th of July, the baby will be here. So, right. Just, um, we'll just, just like my Uncle Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Uncle Sam. But yeah, I'll talk about this since it is jazz fest, like I was talking yeah. to Mike. Um, do you have any particular jazz fest sets, either at the fest or after, that stand out to you as some great ones? Because oh, yeah. first, the one I talked about you first. Think about ones we played or ones that we've watched? Oh. Any yeah. any memory? So I was I was uh, Ann and I were doing stopped by our friend um, Pete Moreno and Amanda. Um, Pete Moreno is a guitar player, as you know from yeah. from uh, Tremont Shorty's band. We we went on a little bike ride and stopped by their courtyard yesterday. Did a little social. They have a lovely lovely courtyard, by the way. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, and and just coincidentally, uh, they were playing the uh, 2010 Trombone Shorty set on OZ from from Jazz Fest which was nice to hear um but we were talking about uh I, I can't i don't remember if it's 2012 or 2013 we had a late night show at uh at the howlin wolf that people always bring up to us yeah where well, that guy brazil sat in uh, yeah 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 that was that was a funny that, we'll was, tell that story he started playing the guitar. we had like a million guests like it was so much fun it was so loose and like we brought Maggie Kern up, she did like one of her songs. Lettuce and we horns up. were up there for a minute, and I just remember thinking like, "Whoa, we're this is like actually happening." We're kind of yeah, it was together. like, "Whoa, we're like playing with like legit musicians. This is yeah. awesome." And we were, we were, it was just like super loose, super fun, and people all the time talk about that show like it was like really special. Um, so that's def that's definitely a standout as far as like jazz fest time frame shows. As far as like our fairground sets, I feel like the last couple of years are probably the highlights for me just because like I feel like I've grown more comfortable like 
performing on big stages and whatnot yeah. where it's not a big deal to like it's just yeah. we could just have fun with it you know you like play and it's i guess the it's kind of daunting at first when it's yeah. like oh, shit dave matthews and tim reynolds are playing right after us not only are there a sea of people there but the uh the clout of the individuals who are surrounding us is definitely that upper echelon yeah like what it, it, it would it would give me some performance anxiety always when i was younger i think performing in new orleans knowing so many good oh, music yeah, were watching and then also, though, like, in the early days of us playing at Jazz Fest, it would be, like, us lugging our own amps in our car and dealing with that headache. Yeah. But now it's just, like, the last couple of years, it's been, like, so – I'm so grateful for our amazing crew that just sets up our gear. Not It's not backline dysfunction. Yeah. It's just, like, all the headache is – most of the headache, I should say, is gone. And it's just, like – so much we can just have fun and the attention can be worrying about our parents backstage and all exactly. that exactly that's what i was alluding, alluding to Good. you picked up on that <laughs> yeah that's uh everybody is different what they want backstage but obviously as you know jazz fest is we get a very small trailer and unless you're the who who only gets what maybe three trailers we have our entire ecosystem and layers of people within our inner circle coming to this event and they all get it's squeezed fun. it's like i want to i want to talk to everybody's parents and it's yeah. like really i love everybody's parents and it's great but it's just like just a little bit <laughs> much like right before a big performance i kind of want to like it's like an adult daycare that's how i feel like where there's just so much going on there's so much yeah. stimulation where i just usually hide in the crew room so. yeah yeah it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great time though so what about you what what's your what's your jazz fest uh stand up you know fest? i'm trying to think for us it's just the feeling of the first one to even be there is like, it's hard to recreate the emotions you go through when you're starting to do stuff like that. But like the ones you're saying, just as the, the crowd gets bigger and I don't want to say the stakes, but just the expectation and what we're doing gets higher and higher every year. Uh, God willing and luckily has topped the last, you know, and we yeah. just have had this trajectory and, uh, I don't mind telling this now because people didn't know, but we were going to play in front of the who, because I saw on the rev heads, people were discussing, they thought we were going to headline Gentilly. They never came out with the daily cubes for okay, jazz fest. Not. Oh yeah. Yeah. We were going to play. So this year we were going to play uh, last year. We closed out the Gentilly stage, which was amazing. That was a, oh, a high point. And this year there's a, a, the only bigger stage is the actor stage. And we were going to perform right before the closer, uh, the, the who, which is one of my all time favorite yeah. bands. Not a, not a bad band to not play. Huh? It said not a bad band to play right before. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like the only bigger, the only bands like on that sort of level are like, for, I mean, as far as like actual wide success and like personal enjoyment are the Rolling Stones, which we were blessed to do last summer. And, you know, maybe like what about Chili Peppers or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Definitely. Insane. But, uh, what about, um, particular sets you've seen at yeah Jazz that's a good question really dig. Um, i remember we both saw this foo fighters set that 20 that was amazing yeah. 12. yeah i've seen them three or four times since then oh, but there's something magical about that set even my my friend mike who was there who is a huge live music buff and sees lots of concerts he's yeah. seen them since too and he said it was just a great rock and roll set that one sticks out something for me. about yeah something about it was just like it was loose it was it was amazing yeah, I saw. I, I've seen them a couple times since I saw them at Voodoo, it, 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 and it could have been subjective. It could have been where I was standing, but what we had a group. It was like maybe like ten of us and like and our significant others, just like it just like drinking drinking warm Miller Lights and just having a blast. <laughs> and it was just Foo Fighters Rush. It's one of the guys. Obviously, they have great songs and this prolific long career, but they back it up on stage. And uh, oh, yeah. it was really that was that was a special one. I was talking to Mike. And Dave Grohl was just obviously such a match, such a such a stand up guy. Yeah, uh, he's uh, he's I think I obviously coming from Nirvana and then Foo Fighters, he's kind of uh, established himself as like an elder statesman of the rock scene, where it's something that you can look yeah. up to, or it's like I can be like that guy when I'm fifty and and not feel bad about it. No, he's yeah. great. Um, Speaking of Nirvana, did you did you by any chance catch a little bit of that Post Malone? You know, everybody's been talking about it. And it good. You like it? I what did well, he? I, do? A, I popped in for like a little bit, and I was like, this. I was like, all right, this is this is awesome. Like he they, he rocked it. He's he's talented. Yeah, Surprising. no. I, I remember watching. 
I was watching something of a, a performance of him. I don't know if it was like a huge festival, but my favorite part was when he actually was playing guitar and, and singing yeah. being musical as he's a actually, like, he's actually a good yeah. Person, yeah. And that's like it it makes me happy to know that he is he is like that. And he seems genuine. He seems like a good guy, even though he looks a little crazy. He seems like a good guy. Yeah. So, but no, yeah. I think it's cool that this younger generation, like Nirvana's cool again, the way yeah. they were the biggest band in the world for a period of time. It was time. Travis Barker on drums too. And he was, yeah, yeah, that, that definitely helps. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, I'm going to have to definitely check that out. Um, have you been listening to anything else recently that you've been? I've been listening to a lot of good stuff recently. Is that mouthwash? Yummy. Uh... Oh, it's water. Sorry. <laughs> Stay hydrated. I'm Get pulling up my Spotify to, to see. So, um, there is not, not a particular, but I'm, I'll give a shout out to the Global Funk uh, playlist on Spotify. I was enjoying that. Yeah, check that out. I'm just that. Really good. Uh, Nate Smith has a new EP out that's beautiful with uh, he, with, with vocals and strings. Is, He's a pretty, is that the group or no? Is what? Is it just Nate Smith Kinfolk or is it Nate Smith? Do you it's know? just under, I think it's just under Nate Smith, yeah. um, who's who's an incredible drummer. He has a, like another album that's basically just drum solos because he, he kind of took off going viral with him in these incredibly inventive drum solos. Yeah. Um, and But th this album is like beautiful. Um, it's got really cool string arrangements. Um, I'll check it so out. Cool. And then also the, the Fiona Apple record is excellent. It's like very genuine um home spawn she recorded at home our our old sound engineer uh jamie actually was was, was pivotal in um helping get get her home set up going and she she mentioned him in an article uh, kind of crediting him for helping her get that set up she recorded i think mostly in garage band at home but it, it's just like so so uh her you know it's really cool yeah. i gotta i've i gotta add it to the list of things to check out but yeah it's uh, we, I was talking to someone at TuneCore recently just about how so much music is getting put out there where, not that it wasn't necessarily happening before, but there's more of a timeline and a scenario of when you might want to release something. And now people are shacked up in their house with nothing else to do but be creative, which is a beautiful thing. And I think we're going to get a lot of great music out of this if there's any silver lining to it. I, I do think so. I think I, I hope that uh, we can all find some ways to grow out of out of this this situation and you know i don't know i, I hope i hope we fully recover but i don't know what that looks like you know but they keep tossing around this thing on npr new normal which i guess yeah. there you you can't think about it's like pre and post 9 11 kind of vibe where you just it totally changed the landscape yeah of, of I my mom about it is like those are by far the two biggest things historically that have happened in my lifetime. Now I'm living in one and one that happened when we were kids. So, but it's, uh, it's something hopefully we can just tell our grandkids about and look back and think it wasn't terrible, but uh, you know what? We just need to flatten the curve. As I yeah. Say. I, yeah. It's like, I think and we, we, we've kind of done that to, so far. You know, it's been a massive cooper, cooperative effort. So that's kind of like, that is humans cooperating and like society coming together. And, yeah, the, the, you know. and we've been kind of lucky in that where we are social distancing, the weather has been incredible. Like it's been, I couldn't imagine being somewhere where I didn't want to be. And that would just uh, mm -hmm. be a different kind of uh, experience. And you're gonna have you're gonna have this summer. I, I mean, I'm like I'm I'm kind of mentally preparing for. I mean, we haven't officially canceled summer shows yet, but I'm mentally preparing that we won't be yeah, doing shows. So you'll be indoors in the AC with a new baby this summer, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I to be honest, we kind of wish the kid was already here because we're yeah. sitting yeah, around in this waiting yeah. phase. But yeah, this will be a very very different summer. I'm hoping before the child comes there might be uh levels of social gatherings where it's like all right less than 50 people can come just so you can hang out and get some kind of human interaction in a physical yeah, it seems way. like that'll we're probably not too far off from that but like if you, i guess it's like if you're going to see somebody that could be vulnerable it's like you might want to not go to something like that like if you're if, if you had a if if your mom or, you know, or your dad was nearby and you were seeing them regularly, you might choose not to do something like yeah. that. Yeah. So, I yeah. think it's just going to have to be at the discretion of the individual, but I, I think we did a good job of trying to 
stop it as best we could without the vaccine. So I did see an article uh, like an hour or two ago that some uh, some researchers in Oxford had successfully vaccinated a couple rhesus monkeys against it. I guess they're are they close to us? The species, the closest they can get. So. It's they're a, gonna they're, they're moving on to human trials with that so that that could be a big breakthrough you know i don't know who knows uh yeah actually bertha was telling me not too long ago <clears throat> she saw this graph of what it would have been like had china implemented some kind of social distancing or quarantine and they the experts are saying 95 percent of the outbreak could have been prevented within a three-week span which is crazy to think about how far it's spread across the world so yeah. I think too, there's also the show explain if you watch that on Netflix. Yeah, I do watch that. Yeah. Just Fox. Came out with one on the coronavirus. They they came out with one on Corona. So last year they planned one on a, what would happen in a potential pandemic. So they have people like Bill Gates and all these experts speaking. Yeah, it was, yeah. a, they're like, Oh, this is happening now. So they just wow. filled it in with uh, the current landscape of things. I, I admire Bill Gates a lot. I, I watched, um, there, there's a, 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 a mini series on Netflix called like Inside Bill Gates Brain or something. It's like three part hockey series profiling him. And he's just like he spends all of his time just figuring out how to help best positively impact humanity because he's like, all right, I became the richest man in the world. I'm not going to focus on making money anymore. He just reads all day, does, you yeah. know, like talks to experts and and he's he's kind of he's dumping like tons of money into coming up with uh and time and energy too when you yeah. are a man like that whose time yeah. is worth everything for him to pour himself into something like that is he's uh he's going to be legendary you know like they'll be say talking about it for generations and what he's done yeah, yeah. say what you want about like you know his business practices. and all that but he's yeah, yeah. yeah. I, he's <laughs> like an okay guy yeah exactly if i was a member of the uh jobs family i might feel differently about that but you never I think they ended up fun, just fine as far as, you know, whatever, you know, if he, okay, maybe he, he stole some aspects of an operating system or something in the 80s, but, you know, I think the Jobs family ended up just fine as well. So, yeah, <laughs> I don't, it's that Silicon Valley stuff. <laughs> but yeah, you mentioned but, that, uh, so you said a lot of, he reads a lot. Have you been reading anything particular that you've been digging into? I'm reading a book now called uh, Utopia for Realists. It's uh, it's interesting. Um, I think it was written in like 2014, um, and it's he he's kind of, it's, it's an economist, and he's kind of making the point that at every point, most of the progressive ideals that we value as a society were viewed as far fetched and utopian. So at one point, the, the, having the right for anybody to vote or a democratic society at one point, having the right for women to vote or, or having a society free from uh, having slaves. So he kind of states that that's like the overarching uh, thesis. And then he moves on to say, you know, it's very simple to eradicate homelessness. homelessness. It actually saves society money instead of spending all this money on, on you know, uh, on these different programs. You just give them, you just give them an apartment. <laughs> Yeah. Now, like he backs up with interesting studies same thing for he, he he's a supporter of universal income which is not something that i took seriously before but especially with this oh, oh, yeah we kind of even like it more uh so it's it, it's it's very interesting and it's uh it's 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 a good bit of positivity to uh, yeah. uh for this time and actually it's funny you mentioned that about the best way to rid homelessness is just to give these people apartments. I think New Orleans is actually on the forefront of that. And there's been a lot of success with specifically with the veterans of them getting yeah. houses here and the programs working where literally you just give these people shelter as a start and then they could be able to turn around whatever they need to turn around, which is, uh, it's, it's nice to think that people in this city are, are, on a progressive tip, at least in something in that matter. Yeah, I think I think they're kind of coming around to to some of those ideas. Um, like just, the UBI man, which is like I think the first time I heard about that was like on the Rogan podcast like eighteen months ago. This was before Yang was even doing his thing. Yeah, yeah. And they had an in depth conversation with like an economist and like a billionaire and everybody, and stating why it can and can't work. But when you're on the outside looking in it seems like you're saying far more far-fetched of an idea until now where 
people are stagnant and they can't work. So you need to just survive somehow if you can't make any money. Yeah, the, the first I think I heard about it seriously was uh, Yuval Harari, either in Sapiens or Homo Deus. His, yeah, his, uh, his other book. a great book if, if people out well, there. Yeah, those, that's like the book I would recommend most to anybody is uh, You Sapiens. can pick it up. It's, it's dense, but it's really interesting information that's being processed. And he writes about it in a way that's not as academic. And it just, uh, it was a really good book. Yeah, to to like, just to 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 view humanity from the 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 history of humanity from a truly macro scale. Like everything you learn about history growing up is the last maybe two thousand years. Yeah, definitely. But it goes back, you know, the entire history of our species, which is around two hundred thousand years. Um, so you're, he's talking about not the first time that uh, Europeans landed in America or Europeans landed in. Australia, but the first time that our species landed on these continents and, and interbred with other uh, species in the same genus as us and like these crazy animals that we coexisted with and yeah. how the fossil record indicates like how shortly after we land on an island, like all the megafauna disappears within yeah, the next 200 say, years. Yeah. There's, there's... And, uh, we're, you know, we're seeing that now in the oceans because we, we now have the technology to just d drench up whatever we want from the ocean. So we're seeing the megafauna, the, the giant whales and, and whatnot in the, in the oceans uh, disappear. So, I mean, it, it's just, we're an amazing species that has conquered the, uh, the world and, you know, we leave a path of destruction and, you know, it's fascinating. Yeah, it's really what are you reading? <laughs> what are you reading now? You know, I right now I've just been on a massive, massive podcast kick and where I've just been I just recently found out that uh I had a great uncle of mine who was with the Marines on Iwo Jima at twenty. Like oh, wow. I was just invited to this um family but my, my grandmother had passed a few months ago, so I reconnected with a ton of people at her funeral but then i was invited to this facebook group and people have just been posting old pictures and then they posted one of this my uncle don who i don't remember ever meeting who was 20 years old then so i've just been trying to wow. take as many podcasts in from that and just he's alive still no no he, okay. he's been dead for a while now but just uh that was uh the big thing that happened to their generation against COVID is like our our war is what they're trying to explain it a little bit so it's almost like, like our our great depression kind of i, ho I hope it, yeah. the economic in impact doesn't doesn't last that long but it's certainly possible it's you know, i've obviously i'm not an expert on any of this but they said two to three years we're, we're a couple of musicians talking so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i don't claim to know anything about economics nor should you take any of my advice with anything fiscally but yeah they said it could be two to three years minimum so and that's going to affect the everything it's not like any particular sector is not affected by this yeah it's it's funny because like i have uh i grew up in new york uh suburbs in new york and like pretty affluent area and like a lot of my like almost all of my friends like from from high school are just like seems like like totally unaffected they're just like working from home and it's like a like how are you guys like how do you like I, I guess, I don't know, there's still, if you're, if you're like a lawyer or a doctor or whatever, like, I don't know what these jobs are, but like. Uh, a lot of jobs can still work there. And like, my brother is still going into his office every day. There's only a handful of them, but there yeah. are ways for people to, to still go out there and work. It's, yeah. um, it's a lot like, obviously, in this town, the service industry was greatly affected. I saw an article that. yesterday that like, 20, there's in Vegas, there's 25% unemployment. It's got to be around the same here, you know, as far as tourist economies and service economies. I can't remember the gentleman's name, but on NPR, they had this guy who's a, a pretty famous restaurateur in Manhattan. And he was saying he expects even in that city with that great uh, cuisine yeah. and economy that 75% of those restaurants aren't coming back, which is Damn. wild to think of, you know, like biggest city in the world for, in terms of culture. And, but it's, uh, it's the times we are living in. So, yeah. Oh, I mean, I guess, I guess we just got to hope that uh, they, they can get a vaccine out pretty quickly and the world could like mobilize for, we need, a, we need, we need inter, we need global cooperation, cooperation. So, yep. you know, we can mobilize to, to, to move early 
uh, for the next time this happens. Because that's more. It's a, yeah, so it's going to happen again. History is proven. It's just a matter of when. And now yeah. we're seeing actually how fragile our entire existence was. When uh, in terms of uh, death count and everything, this is it's not as bad as the Spanish flu was in 1918. But I can only imagine if we had something hit that hard now and just how interconnected the world is, it would just yeah. be absolutely catastrophic. Not that it's not now. It's still a huge deal. But it's, it's – I'm just trying to roll the punches. And like I told Mike when we were talking about this the other day, I, I'd feel a lot more nervous and scared if I was the only person going through this. But everybody is. So I don't feel yeah. completely alone. It's, uh, yeah. Totally. But yeah, it's. Uh, I think everything will get better eventually. Eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Look, here's Hank. This is my dog, everybody. Here's Hank. Wait. Here's I think Hank. dogs are living their best life during this. They have no idea what's going on. More treats, longer walks. Yeah. So. But yeah, how he, is Hank doing? He's doing all right. He he had a he had a like rather uh intensive surgery like yeah. about seven or eight weeks like ago right right at the tail end of tour yeah where it was like the the beginning tour. Of tour but that was yeah. <laughs> the end of tour he has like he has good nights and bad he threw like i don't know he's having trouble keeping food down he threw up this morning but he seems like he seems in good spirits yeah so, we where, actually had an issue with gilligan where I think he might have gotten into some ant poison in the backyard because I was having an ant problem I was trying to take care of. And it was about a week of him like vomiting and diarrhea. And it, we just figured it out and it took like four different medicines or so, but it's, you got to take care of your babies. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Love my dog. Is that a Rod Stewart shirt? I see? It is. Oh. I actually uh, won this. Day at um at and last year at, at Campy's uh, house party or housewarming party I think it was or maybe it was a maybe it was somebody's birthday or something. Um, Dave and I were playing. You know the game Shut the Box, the gambling dice game. Yeah. I kept winning off of them, and I got up to like like eighty bucks, and I was like, all right, you can give me eighty bucks, or you could find like a sick vintage Rod Stewart <laughs> T-shirt online <laughs> and give me that just like randomly. Typically Rod Stewart. Yeah, I said that, and and this is what this is what uh, we found online. It was like exactly the ma the amount, and um, yeah, eighty eight. I really dig it. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy how the vintage T shirt game is like a really really popular thing these days. Oh yeah, like, it's funny because a lot of the cuts of them are not modern at all, but it's almost the irony of it and everything. No. Well, I gotta like fold. I gotta like. You know, like roll it up and like yeah, tuck it in a little bit. Like James yeah. or somebody just rolling it. Yeah. Up. No, but the fonts. I keep my I keep my pack of cigs in here. But no, it, I, it it looks like it's in good condition, and it, from this angle, though, it looks very white and crisp still. So. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's a good shirt. Our our former tour manager David Mellorian is is has has a has a great uh stockpile of vintage t shirts. Oh, yeah. He he sources them and sells them and stuff. Yeah. Sees them. You can put a link later up for that. He will send me every once in a while really random stuff, and he's like, this is so you. Or he'll yeah. things like, it'll be like a Bugle Boy hoodie from 1992 and like bright purple or something. Like Bugle that. Boy, dude, I remember, I remember like, Old that was like an early brand that I was aware of liking, you know? Like, I was like five, and I liked Bugle Boy. Boy, and I think maybe like uh, – I really wanted a no fear hat when I was like nine and I don't, yeah, I don't know why I saw someone in my neighborhood who was older, probably had it or something like that. Yeah. And then I wanted it, but it's funny to think about all those if bugle boy, if it's even a brand anymore, who knows? Look it up. What is bugle boy active? I'm getting a, I'm getting results for uh, Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy. The song was Bugle Boy Industries was a clothing company founded in '77. 
and went bankrupt in 2001. So I mean, they they didn't pick up that like. <clears throat> so obviously, there's. I mean, that would be a good idea for somebody to go in and buy that. Buy that now, yeah. Yeah, because people like that retro kind of thing. Jinko, you know? I th- I think made a comeback to a certain degree. It was, looks terrible though. Those those big. But I don't think I ever wanted the huge huge pants, but I definitely remember having a pair of Jinkos in like middle school. I bought a pair and I was just like Not the huge parachute ones. But I never actually wore them. I was just like, I feel so stupid in these. Like the big one. You got a big big one. I think so. Yeah. I think so. I had that. I think what they call carpenter jeans it has that little piece of denim that kind of hooks near your back oh yeah i remember those yeah Yeah, there's just a ton of little fun things from that era but yeah man i have like these jinko jeans it's funny to think of the that 90s fashion like what the fuck or even early 2000s what were people thinking (laughs) that kind of probably say the same thing about every single era to some yeah there's some timeless books and everything but i personally Everybody has a different sense of style. I'd like to be able to look at myself and not be like, holy shit, what was I thinking in that era? But you know, you never know. It, but it it's also nice to be like, oh, yeah, I was having fun. You know? <laughs> yeah, no, there's definitely the flip side of that. There's definitely yeah. the flip side of that. But yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting time for everything. I wonder if they're going to start having some kind of fashion chic medical thing with the mask because – a lot of people, it's necessary, and it's maybe, I would assume, during the next fashion week, we'd probably see that involved in some capacity. Who knows? Yeah. I don't know. It's, you got to uh, imagine people aren't, aren't spending as much on uh, clothing and stuff, right? I mean, probably a lot of at-home comfortable things are probably doing well. I have not worn pants since this. All right, all right, let me retract that. I haven't worn jeans since this started. I've worn like track a couple pants. times for like video things like this, you know, like, yeah. Always go from top up. That's what yeah. it is. That's been yeah. working so far. But yeah, it's uh, the athleisure thing is definitely. Yeah. My dad was saying he's wearing like uh, Lululemon pants all the time. I, I have the shorts. I, I've been, I've been working out daily. So, you know, I've been, doing that but uh why don't we take the why don't we take some guitars out sure let me see if i can pull this bass up oh see i see your i see your bottom half now i know you're wearing shorts (laughs) yeah this is my new music room since i uh it looks good. Yeah, it's it's our living room, but I've got all the guitars there, and I got my setup. It's yeah. it seems to be working all right. So what you've been messing with, man? Oh yeah, we can do a whole show on that. I just like everybody else, I've just been holed up working on stuff. Um, you know, you know the drummer AJ Hall, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and bass player, local yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He just dropped, I think I might have given it to Campy already. He did a bunch of drum loops that are super dope. Oh, cool. And I've just been like every single day oh, yeah, yeah. Up, and I'll just throw five ideas on a line and then I won't listen. Where, 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 did, you, where did you, where do you get it? The loops just like on a, on Bought it a- off his website for 30 bucks. Just type in AJ Hall. Cool. Yeah, it's I think AJ Hall Music or AJ Hall Production, and because I'm friends with him, and I was just checking some of his uh, social media presence on it, but I've been coming up with just stuff like that way. And I did a gig with him once with uh, with Bobby Lee Rogers during Jazz Fest. Nice. He, he played drums, yeah, and he's like he brought the scene. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. He was just like he never you know played with Bobby before. Bobby brought him in, got, and he was like killer. Like you know, put, put a really cool like swag feel to uh to bobby's and i'm hoping eventually when this all gets said and done the first thing we could start doing is having gigs at places like blue nile and the maple leaf and some yeah, of those yeah. smaller clubs where just like everybody will just be excited to be outside of their house yeah I, i'm hoping maybe pack maybe packy can get the chicken box going this summer but we'll like see I said, for, oh yeah i don't know the problem for us is like we're not going to drive to Nantucket if we can't fly there. And you could, in theory. But what about you? What have you been listening to or playing or anything? Um, I've been kicking around a couple song ideas, and um, I've actually been kind of 
the last couple nights I've been messing with just like I, I I'm not a piano player at all like so I'm I'm not good at at, at um keys but like I find the uh, synth sounds inspiring. So like, I'll just like kind of pull up a, like a, a cool synth sound, put a little thing with that and then just sort of start building a track. Yeah, I, I, I too, I don't play keys, so I find it difficult, but it, yeah. I have right here my little Akai mini thing. And it yeah, definitely too. helps when you can have an idea set and then you can just add just a little bit of spice with just keyboards or synthesizer in some capacity like obviously i'm not going to get it to sound great but if you have like a cool melody or something cool thing yeah cool sound yeah yeah because now that i come to realize a lot of that stuff in that world that i really like it's not like this crazy baroque <laughs> classical vibe going on it's usually just something that's more simple and it's just the happy. sound the sound of it yeah yeah Actually. which is half the battle is trying yeah. to get all the sound of that stuff right but yeah here start playing i'm gonna pull up my uh you know what to make this easier i might just go out of my amp yeah. that sound because yeah, you're using the interface for something else but i mean yeah i don't know i just wanted to we could figure we could talk about little things that uh that that we do on our instruments or something you know not not like not uh necessarily like i don't know if it's the latency will work with us uh being able to perform together you know what i'm saying but uh yeah no it's it's this is definitely the position i'm in now is outside of like eating and sleeping <laughs> this is how i've been this whole quarantine just that's great yeah yeah yes i've been like i've been liking your videos yeah you know like I was doing a ton of them at first and it got to the point where I would spend an entire day and I'd do like 10 of them and then I would get burnt out and like, I don't want to do them anymore. So now I'm just trying to space them out more. And when I feel like doing one, I just do it. Like, I think tomorrow I'm going to probably do a chic one. And then like somebody requested nice. to do a I was doing a good chic. I listened to it when I was running the other day, I listened to the, um, the, the pot Rick Rubin and Malcolm Gladwell have a podcast and they inter and they also have another guy that that uh, hosts sometimes and he interviewed Nile Rogers um that was cool Nile Rogers I gotta she check that out and now you said Rick Rubin uh they just came out with a Beastie Boys I don't it's a documentary but it's hosted by the two surviving members and it's I think it came out on Apple Plus but I was able to check it out on my Plex account and it's super cool it's really well done. Um, I don't have either of those things. Um, is there a lot of stuff on, on the Apple Plus? Uh, from what I've told since uh, Disney has all their stuff on there, when you have young kids, that's okay. good. But they have some shows coming out. So, What guitar is that you're playing? This one is, uh, is like a, it's a Gibson, it's an old Gibson um, kind of short scale neck, parlor body style guitar. Dave actually bought this from Blues Angels when we were on the I was road. Gonna say, I thought I, that looked cool. like a guitar that Dave has. Yeah, and since I, I gave him that SG, that Gibson SG for his thirtieth thirtieth birthday, uh, he gave he he gave me this Gibson for uh, for my thirtieth birthday two uh, two or three yeah. years ago. Are you, what are you in the market for any new instruments in the ne near future? That are you, you have your eye on anything? I'm not really like feeling like I want, I'm feeling like I'm on a little spending moratorium with, uh, no, with, with uh, I'm just saying hypothetically, if we were in a normal stance, cause there's, there are a couple things that I like. I kind of want a baritone guitar cause I don't have a baritone guitar and I love the sound of them. Um, yeah, like a Coronado or something like that. That would be the next. Yeah. And I've been having fun. I bought, I bought a bass on the road when we were in Austin a couple months ago. I bought that, that, uh, silver tone bass. I've been, I've been really having fun with that flat wound strings yeah i i will say as like obviously i play round wound live and i do have some bases that have flats on live but there's just something about the flats recording where it, it just oh, yeah. it's great you really don't have to do yep. it. exactly yep and now you put a little nice compression on you get a half decent plug-in but yeah i don't think i've tried to do any virtual jamming yet it's yeah. people have discussed it but it's, yeah. it's different Thank you. 
but it, it is nice to just sit and talk to somebody and have an instrument in your hand because it's just been me you know like there hasn't been any interaction and that's like one of the most important and favorite things about doing this is getting to play with people so let me see if yep. I can you louder huh I'm trying if i can put you up louder ah so what are we putting these things are we just putting these things up somewhere or, or the plan is to uh put them up on patreon eventually at least out to my understanding and we'll have it uh i was talking to morgan about it eventually like we'll do i did mike i'm doing you i'm gonna do somebody else and we just talk about whatever and then yeah, uh, i feel like this, uh, since it's like kind of current of, we're talking about some current things it might be good to just throw it up sooner than later you know yeah no that that's another uh, concept of what we're doing i'm just trying to see how we're gonna release it i was talking to ed i think him and i are gonna do a quarantine cooking show where yeah. we're gonna do stuff where stuff we know how to make and think we make it well and then we're gonna try and make like a bill jacobs pizza when we've never oh, perfect. Done. yeah yeah he was texting but, us for yeah the rest of it. yeah yeah our, our friend uh he owns this pizza place in chicago called peace which is this really incredible stuff and he sent us a recipe of how to make really good home pizza, which I've never tried, but it might be good. It might not, but we're just going to see what happens and go. I mean, the recipe is good. It's the question. Yeah, is, yeah. Can we follow through? It. Yeah, yeah. It's, can I, can I make pizza, which is very difficult. I tell you what, at, so I was saying earlier, Ann and I went over to, uh, to Pete and Amanda's yesterday. He made crawfish Monica and it was better than the crawfish Monica at, the jazz fest you should tell my wife that because she's actually trying to get me to pick it up because that's get the recipe from some of the i'll get it from him some of these places are actually um delivering food from jazz fest which is really good and, um my partner and um i mean you obviously know her. uh she she uh she ordered some some uh crawfish enchiladas pythian market is delivering yeah, it Mar yeah they had how uh, they were frozen right yeah yeah just them up that allows you to uh, have it last longer, which is nice. So, when this is all said and done, what uh, what are you most excited about getting back into? That's a good question. Um, I'm I'm excited to just to like be be in a in a, in a social place and feel comfortable at, at a rock a show, you know, yeah. the band. I love traveling, so I'm I'm looking forward to doing that again. But I mean, this uh, this has also been a welcome pause in 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 some ways that you know we've been so nonstop tr uh, on the road, and like even with you know going out a lot, you know I, I, I'm I kind of like hanging in at home. Um, yeah, and having the space to you know to 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 get into some things. So that it, it, that's been nice. Uh, in some ways, I, I think I'm, I'm trying to just, you know, remain, remain grateful for, uh, for my right. health. Yeah. Have you, what about you? What are you most excited? Uh, I just, I'm like, uh, I'm trying to think the best way to describe myself. I'm totally, I'm an extrovert, but I'm also an introvert at the same time where I love being around people, but I also have no problem with being by myself and just yeah. relaxing. And I guess when I was younger, I was more concerned about, not necessarily just FOMO, but if I was just relaxing and not doing anything, it's like, no, I need to be working towards something. And now that the whole world is on pause and I'm like, oh, that's, it's kind of okay. And it's nice to relax and yeah. work on some betterment of yourself. I don't know. Are there any hobbies or anything you've been like focusing on them before uh, that maybe before you were either neglecting or you didn't have the time or, or thinking about. I've been, uh, well, I've been, I've been, I feel like if I don't do anything, the least I could do every day is 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 do a little exercise. So I've been yeah. going for a good run every other day, and I've been doing yoga or something like that every other day. There you go. Uh, so that's been nice, and I've just been enjoying the outside and and um, like I I I I want to like I want to work you know be be uh productive with music is like my yep. main thing, um, but also just like putting that self-imposed like pressure to be productive is sometimes counterproductive for something oh, yeah. like music. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You're feeling it, you're feeling it and you want to go and Yeah, like cuz looseness is like is also key for for something like music which is like an inherently social kind of thing. So 
doing it alone is uh, is challenging sometimes. Um, but I, yeah, no, I I think I have some some good things that I'm been kicking around with, with, with that. Yeah, I guess because there's so much time off now. Uh, what you're doing is under a bigger microscope because every day I'm going back and listening to what I came up with or I'm troubleshooting maybe production stuff I was having issues with where before yeah. I would just say like, you know, screw it, I'm not going to do this anymore. I have the time to sit around and meticulously yeah. piece everything together. So I'm, that's something I'm going to try and take when we're done with all this is just like, not necessarily just attention to detail. Like I'm in the moment, I'm doing this. It's going to yeah. be fine. Don't worry about what's going to happen later if it's not perfect or whatever. So That's the thing that always, like, ends up hamstringing a demo, I feel like, at home is, like, you just get caught up on, like, oh, this loop isn't, isn't fucking, you know, like. You know what? Correctly or whatever. And it's just, just, just play. Like, it's, you know. Like, I totally get caught up in that or, like, yeah. I don't like this key tone. So I spend an yeah. hour and a half searching for a better tone of the key. But I know yeah. like, Pippi specifically, he's really good at just, I don't want to say not giving a fuck, but he'll just like put it out there warts and all and everything. And I definitely admire the fact where he's just like idea down, idea down where I'm here. Yeah. Like I'm here hunched over trying to figure out like why there's some weird, like hum coming out or instead of just yeah, yeah. It out. Yeah. It's everybody. I have a certain tolerance for, for the imperfections while in the in that creative process, I think. Yeah, I guess from like the bare bones process. Speaking of the creative process, why don't you uh just I for people that didn't know you just help uh your friend growing up produce an EP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk help a little bit about flax. Yeah. Just a different approach, I guess, from as like a creative type in a band approaching something as to like coming from the macro level up as the producer. Okay. So, um, I'll just, I'll, I'll give the whole kind of background on, on how I ended up, um, working, working with him. He was, he was an acquaintance of mine growing up. Um, we weren't particularly friends, honestly, in childhood. So a couple of years ago, I remember he, he hit me up on, on Facebook. He was like, Hey, like, would you mind, having a phone call with me i've been i've been writing some music and i kind of like blew it off i was like yeah i mean what i don't really you know i'm i didn't expect anything oh, nice to see you too bud yeah i didn't expect i didn't know we did he never knew him to do music or anything um and so we have a, we ended up having a phone call and i just you know he picked my brain about some stuff and you know he seemed he seemed like a smart uh intelligent guy he was doing some cool stuff uh he was a journalist he was involved in some film production stuff he was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, man, send me whatever, send me your songs. And he sent me a couple of songs. And I was like, holy shit, these are really good. Like, I, I really like these. Um, and, you know, like, I, I think these deserve to be you, to be put out. Like, you should make these, you know, record these well. And and, and uh, I might have given some input on, on them. And I basically, yeah, like, I was like, I, he, he came to, he was in town for Jazz Fest, I think, maybe 20 17 or something and and we talked i was like yeah i'd love to be involved in the project um and i and we kind of figured out that like maybe the best way would be like i i could like help oversee it and uh as in this production producer role and i think for for me like what what that meant being a producer was um you know helping with the arrangements helping give input a little, little you know i, I think a, a producer just helps in whatever way whatever strengths that they yeah can. i guess so, there's so many hats that can be worn. It's not just the guy sitting in front of the computer engineering meticulously mixing. I'm not an engineer. Like, uh, you know, I, I have a, a, I, so I got some good musicians together, booked some studio time, and, you know, I helped edit, edit it to the best of my abilities. Um, but Jones, you're, you got a good ear for, for mixing and stuff like that. So I know you can. I, see, I have a little bit of like ear, like a uh, uh, mixing stuff. Um, but, but we did get some, some good uh, engineers to, to do the, the mix. Cause like ultimately I'm not a professional sound engineer. Like I've mixed some of our live stuff. Cause it's like for live stuff, it's like. It's different. It's easier to get like a really basic mix on a lot. Yeah. It doesn't need to be something that you could listen to a million times to um a few compressors and eq on you just want the tone of everything to be good and the overall balance to be what how i want to hear it yeah you know and, and like yeah that's that that's that um but as far as like a, a an album like a studio album like you can, i don't have that like in-depth knowledge of like the, the yeah, frequency of things that that you really need i think to you be would, like 
professional sound uh, engine, mixing engineer. To get to that point, you would have to invest as much time as we've invested. It's learning. In, 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 uh, yeah, which is, it's worthwhile. I put oh. a ton of time, which was a huge learning experience for me when we did those um, live sessions for Men Amongst yeah. Mountains. I mix mixed those and that was fun and but like after that i was like you know what i'd be fine if i never had if i never mixed one of these again yeah, you gotta <laughs> love the process of sitting there don't love sitting in front of the computer and 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 Same way you know, like troubleshooting issues and things it's yeah. i like performing i like i like being in a creative place and i i like uh you know i i like in, in working with people and, and encouraging them and you know, giving whatever, whatever little, little input I can. Yeah. So the stuff. But I think it's super unique songs and uh, yeah, that, that's what kind of drew, drew me to the, the project. You, do you have, uh, I know this is just something you did. Do you have anything else coming up you're thinking about maybe producing or something you would want to in the future? You know, yeah. There's a band uh, in New Orleans called Simple Sound Retreat that, um, uh, you know, the guy Rex plays bass, Rex Marshall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He he approached me. I'm gonna work with them. Um, help them produce a couple things. Did Rob um, with them? Did Rob fill? Yeah, I think them? Rob refer. Rob re thanks. Re thank Rob. Uh, he re he referred them. He they were like, "Do you produce?" And Rob was like, "Uh, I can do like horn arrangements and stuff, but I'm, I'm he wasn't comfortable doing that." But um, yeah, they reached out. They have some really cool songs. So once once uh once we can get into the studio, once it's safe to do that, I'll I'll, I'll work with them on a couple tunes. There you go. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah, this was fun. I think we got a lot yeah, of hopefully interesting stuff for everybody out there. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, George. Good to see you, man.